thought we'd talk about Picasso's great painting of called Guernica, which actually I remember seeing very many times because it used to be in the Museum of Modern Art before it was sent back to Spain. Yeah, it was. I, I, I kind of feel like I grew up with this yeah, painting. Me too. It was always such a powerful presence at MoMA. Yeah, and it was in a very small little room. It, so was. it was very intense. It was. You know what was interesting is actually um, in, in Picasso's will, he lent it to MoMA until such time as Spain became a democracy mm -hmm. again. And remember, Franco lived for a very, very long, long time. time right? And this painting was made as a response to Franco. It was. Um, and well, to the, a specific event in, in yeah, the a terrible, Civil War. terrible, terrible event. Um, and this is such a loaded and powerful painting and has had such an impact um, both when it was made and, and long afterwards. Yes, which we can talk about too. So maybe we should talk about the historical circumstances sure. in which it was made. Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's a gigantic painting and it was made made um, by Picasso in Paris at the request of one of two Spanish governments that existed at that moment. Remember, there was a civil war going on in Spain, and on one side were the, were the fascists, um, led by Franco, who would win the Spanish Civil War. Um, but on the other side were the, what were called the Republicans. Uh, has nothing to do with American Republicans versus Democrats, but these were people who wanted a democracy. A, a democracy. Right. Um, and they tended to be a bit more on the left, whereas Franco yeah. tended to be very much on the right of this political spectrum in a much more extreme sense than we have today. And, um, and what happened was that Franco was trying to intimidate the population. And you have to remember this is, bef this is we're talking about 1937 now. This is before uh, the, sec the Second World War. Um, there had been the horrors of the First World War, and there had been the rise of fascism uh, in Spain, in Italy, in, in Russia. Mm -hmm. um, and, and in Germany. And in Germany, right. absolutely. Um, and and what, 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 what happened was is that Franco decided to unleash um, violence directly on a civilian population in order to really cow that population mm -hmm. and to assert his power. And to consolidate his power. Absolutely. Right. And so what he did is he um, actually was in touch with Hitler in Germany, mm -hmm. and he allowed Hitler to test out some of his bombers on the, on the city of Guernica. Hard to believe, isn't it? It's really incredible. And Picasso was so horrified by this. The world was horrified by this, um, by, the, by the, the bombings and the, the, the mass civilian casualties that resulted. Um, Guernica was not a military target. Right. Guernica is a little... Town. It's a little town, right. and um, and this is a painting that was Picasso's sort of visceral response to this. Mm -hmm. That was made specifically for an international exhibition in in Paris, mm -hmm. a kind of World's Fair. So um, so maybe we should talk about what we see. Yeah, it's a it's a very powerful image against the horrors of war. I think in the tradition of Goya's Third of May. Or David's The Oath of Horatio. Right. But, but you know, those are really old paintings. And they when you are. think about the 20th century, when this was made, history painting, which is what we were just referring to, mm -hmm. it didn't exist really anymore. Right. And so a lot of people have credited Picasso with almost single handedly reestablishing the importance of grand history painting. Mm -hmm. um, and I think for him, this event required that kind of solemnness, that kind of import. Mm -hmm. Of his, the tradition of history of yeah, painting. Yeah, I mean, so there there are so many things that remind me of of Goya. The figure in the foreground, for example, who's all uh, splayed out with a yes. knife in his hand, and he, you know, like the Spanish peasants yeah. in Goya, yeah. Christ-like in their martyrdom. The other thing that really reminds me of Goya here is Picasso's choice to do this painting in black and black white and, white and grays. grays. Right. And, you know, Goya's painting is in color, but it's all so st starkly lit mm -hmm. that it might as well be... Um, right, and it's about the forces of darkness. It is. <laughs> the yes. forces of good. And the contrast between light and darkness, mm -hmm. both in this painting and in the Goya, mm -hmm. I think is very consciously Picasso, another Spaniard, recalling that great example mm -hmm. of history painting. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And that image of the mother and the child oh, on the left. Oh, so affecting. I mean, you could... I look at this painting and I can almost hear the bombs and the sirens and the screaming. Yeah, it's so palpable. On, on, the, on the extreme right, you have the woman who's fleeing the burning building, right. her burning home. Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, it's a painting that's full of symbolism. Um, there's the, the horse, of course, screaming. There's the broken sword, as you had mentioned. And then I think really potent and really curious and interesting is the light source itself, that lamp. That lamp. You know, people have said it looks like a human eye perhaps mm -hmm. the eye of God, but you have an electric light bulb there. Yeah. Um, and also it could function as an explosion. Mm -hmm. yeah? That could be the explosions from I think above. that's always sort of how it, it felt to me, looking at that, was like the, 
lights flickering on and off and explosions yeah, yeah. and lights and the way that lights sort of, you know, explosions make oh, they lights yes. flicker yes. and, and um, it's, it's, it has this feeling of the chaos of that moment. It really does. It really does. It also kind of um, vilifies modernity in the sense the possibility of having airplanes drop bombs, mm -hmm. you know, because it's an electric light bulb after all. Actually, something else that I find really interesting here is the cross hatching. You mm -hmm. see that especially in the body of the yeah. horse. Yeah. Some some art historians have talked about that as a reference to the newsprint that Picasso used to put in to his papier collages, right. his paper collages. Right. Um, but here it's it's actually painted um, to look like a little hatching, as if it might be print, but it's mm -hmm. not. Um, so a sort of self-reference, but also a reminder that this is a current event. Mm -hmm. um, you right. know, like Jericho's Raft of Medusa, for instance, you know, this is a tragedy that has just taken place. Yeah. yeah. It's a pretty extraordinary painting, isn't and it? And we know that, that when Colin Powell went to the UN oh, to make yeah. the case for the war in Iraq by saying, the claiming invasion of Iraq, yeah. that, I think he believed at the time, that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction, or the Bush administration believed it, and Colin Powell went to make that Make case at the United yeah. Nations, um, they didn't want to take pictures in it, front of this. Well, image. traditionally, the 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 press the the, um, the press sessions are in front of a tapestry that was donated uh, to the UN. Right. Um, that's a copy. That's I a copy. Said, yeah, that's a image, copy of this right? image. And you're right; he did not want to be seen in front of that. Right, it, because he was making a case for war. Yeah. And yeah. here we have this very, uh, you know. Sort stark of, reminder yeah, and, and, of the and price of war. Right, and I think it's really important to say that this is not rep this is represented in a, as a sort of abstract cubist kind of representation that I think makes it more powerful. I think if this had looked photographic, mm -hmm. I don't think it would have the power that it does. I think the the ways that the forms are exaggerated, the hands moving up and across and all of the ways that, that we have a kind of exaggeration here are there to serve the emotional point of the image of, of the horrors of war. And Picasso was brilliant, I think. At, at doing that, at, doing at that just formal that. language of, yeah. of expressing those emotions yeah. and this formally. Is a, yeah, and it's, but it's a form that is used that is folded into a, such a powerful political and mm -hmm. sort of humanistic me yeah. message. And it's, it's interesting also because so much of the history of the 20th century and of art history is, is you know, really looking at art in a way is very separate from a the political arena. A sanitized a formalism. Right. Yeah. In fact, mu much of Picasso's other work is really dealing with the way vision can be represented in a very, very kind of formal mm -hmm. way. And so it's so interesting to see such a powerful statement. I mean, there were other examples in Picasso's work, but, but here is sort of the, the great example in the 20th century of a, of a deeply political painting right. from an artist that who spent a good deal of his career, you're absolutely right, um, really focusing on the way we see and the way mm -hmm. we represent what we mm -hmm. see. And our historians have written art history very much in that way yeah. for much yeah. of the 20th century. So here is a really successful marriage that does not right. separate of, out. Of art that's engaged, yeah. right? In like the world, David. in the most direct way. Right.